Some contain strong language throughout, scenes of violence and footage of warfare. I've spent most of my working life writing about men. I've tried to understand what makes them tick. How do they behave as opposed to how they say they do? I've delved into some pretty dark areas of the male psyche, but for the last few months, even I have been astonished. That was really sick. I wanted to pry into a little-known piece of research about how soldiers actually fight in a war. What I experienced was a bizarre ride into one of the most closely guarded taboos about men. This programme is about what will make a man kill in battle. It's changed how I think about men. What's last time you had a good fight? I've met the mad, the bad, and the very sad. And I've discovered the truth about killing. Man, I saw the muzzle flash on yeah, that. Yeah, baby! Muscle. War. When I was a kid, I used to love it. My favourite toy was Action Man. My favourite films were The Dam Busters and Zulu. And my hero was a comic book character called Captain Hurricane. Every week he'd single-handedly stop tanks, storm machine gun nests and consigned what he called the Squareheads to Kingdom Come. I guess it's no surprise that I grew up thinking that if another war came along, I'd be willing to join up and do my bit. Of course, these days, it may be more fashionable to march against a war than to sign up for one. But the truth is, a great many men still share my sentiments. A quick flick through the telly pages will demonstrate our love affair with the SAS. Military history's a big seller in bookshops. A war movie can still do great box office. And this isn't just idle escapism. Millions of men genuinely believe in their hearts that they could be warriors if it came to the crunch. If you went to war, do you think you'd be able to shoot the enemy? Uh, if someone was pointing a gun at me, I'd shoot them, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. No problem. No problem. I'd have a good go. Yeah, I probably would do, yeah. Definitely. Especially if they're shooting at you. It'd be easier to shoot back, wouldn't it? Right. It's going to shoot me, I'll try and shoot them first. I don't want to die, so... It's almost certain that most of the men I've spoken to here haven't fired a gun before, let alone been a professional soldier but they all blithely assume that they'd be able to kill for Queen and Country. And it's probable that their grandfathers felt the same way as they headed off for the D-Day beaches 60 years ago. The sad fact is, they were totally wrong. In 1947, General S.L.A. Marshall of the U.S. Army interviewed thousands of G.I.s who'd fought in Europe and the Pacific. What he discovered sent shockwaves through the militaries of the Western world. The people he spoke to were not the drivers, engineers, medics or signalmen. They were the frontline infantry. These were the tough guys that the army had selected to be battlefield killers. And what Marshall found was incredible. When they'd come into contact with the enemy, less than a quarter of these soldiers had fired in their direction. But what's more remarkable is that among those who did so, the percentage who really shot to kill was not 25%, not 10%, but a mere 2%. Do you believe that, or...? No. Bollocks. I'd be fairly surprised. I don't believe it. To put it in perspective, if the 1,000 people in this stadium today were professional soldiers trained to kill, then only the ones actually on the pitch would be able to do the job properly. The army was horrified. Other services rushed to analyse their own data, and the Air Force soon found that more than half the total kills in air-to-air -air combat had been done by a mere 1% of their pilots. Research carried out by the other Allied forces appeared to back Marshall's figures. 
From the Battle of Waterloo to the Battle of the Bulge, all the evidence seemed to confirm that, when it came down to it, only a tiny handful of soldiers were happy to carry out the dirty but necessary business of killing. As with any new discovery, there were dissenters in the academic world. But one man who has studied the statistics in detail is Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman, a former member of the elite Army Ranger Corps. Now Professor of Military Science at Arkansas State University, he has no doubt of their veracity. The truth is, at the end of World War II, when our military leadership was 100% combat veterans, they knew it was true. It was not controversial, it was not particularly difficult. They knew we had a problem. The average boy out on the front lines looking over his sights at another human being was not able or willing to kill the poor schmuck in front of him. And we had to fix that. It may seem extraordinary, but I can tell you it's probably quite correct. Professor of psychology Richard Gabriel is another who agrees with Marshall's conclusions. Not only does he agree with them as an expert, but more importantly, as a Vietnam veteran. I'm of the view that he's likely to have been pretty close to the money because we've seen the same situation in World War II, same situa situation in World War I, again in Korea, certainly again in Vietnam, and, and uh, so did the Israelis. I mean, so from that perspective, the idea that somewhere less than 25% of the soldiers are shooting their weapons sounds just about right. Of course, this seems incredible. Whether you get your information from war movies or war memorials, we've all been brought up to believe in the image of our brave lads pluckily doing their bit. And set against everything else we know, it makes even less sense. 95% of violent crimes are committed by men. Millions died in wars in the last century alone. And scientists have dubbed us the violent ape, the evolutionary mistake that actively seeks to kill its own kind. Can Marshall's data really be right? Well, certainly the military took it very seriously indeed. Their initial theory was that the chaos of modern battle was undermining our soldiers' desire to kill the enemy. To discover if this was true, I decided to investigate their findings for myself. The first thing I've got to do is find a battle. I'm off to play soldiers now for the first time since I was a kid. I'm going to be meeting up with some weekend warriors uh, at an experience in the countryside, which is billed as the closest thing you can get to real combat without joining the army. I've got to say, I'm really excited. I'm going to get a gun. Drop Zone is a 24-hour exercise for the average bloke who can pay 100 quid to find out what battle is all about. They fight ex paras and commandos who use their experience in war zones like Bosnia and the Gulf to accurately recreate the excitement and fear of battle. My name's Martin, welcome to Drop Zone. My hope was that I'd understand why I and the vast majority of men would be incapable of killing the enemy, as Marshall claimed. If you get killed on the simulation, just like in real life, you're dead. And if you're in that situation, you are in the fucking shit, boys. We might not all be heroes in a war. OK, I can accept that. But surely, if someone was shooting at us, we'd at least fire back. And certainly, nothing about our instructors led me to believe they'd be shy when it came to slaughter. Don't go in there, Nancy Pansy. Go in with the aggressive look on your faces. Go in there with your battle cry, all right? You're there to fix bayonets. You're there to push your bayonet through his face, through his skull and out the back of his head. From the neck... Like the conscripts in World War II, the guys I'd joined up with were a typical bunch of civilians. Well, a few IT consultants and a barrister, anyway. It's a no-go area, all right? Of course, we're not really putting our lives at risk during this training exercise, but the stresses we're about to be subjected to promise to provide some idea of what raw recruits went through in World War II. We're going flat, I think. You've got to shout! OK, you've got to shout, gents. Shelter! Prepare to move! Move! Down! Attack! Down! I've just got us murdered twice. <laughs> Jesus, power without responsibility. OK, one, two, give cover! 
that after a few hours of learning manoeuvres, I'm still dubious about the idea that confusion would make it hard to fire in battle. 